Thumbelina. There was once a woman who was very lonely and decided to go visit her friend, the fairy. Hello, dear. What brings you here, dear fairy? I'm so lonely. I wish I had a little daughter, even if she was a teeny weeny one. Well, you are a dear friend. So I will help you. Take this grain of barley and go home and plant it in a flower pot. But I want a little girl. What will I do with a grain of barley? Trust me and do as I say. You will receive a very pleasant surprise. The woman went home and planted the grain of barley like the fairy had told her to. The next morning, she was amazed to see that the grain had grown into a beautiful flower resembling a tulip, with its soft petals still shut tight. This is so beautiful! I have never seen anything like it. The woman held the flower tenderly and kissed it. Immediately, the petals opened, and there lay a beautiful tiny girl. Oh my God! She's so pretty and dainty. I shall call her Thumbelina, and I must thank my friend the fairy for such a lovely gift. The woman gently lifted the little girl from the flower. Ah, now let me see how I can make her comfortable. This walnut shell shall be her bed, and I think these flower petals can be used as a mattress and blanket. The woman placed Thumbelina on a tulip petal floating on a plate during the day. How happy Thumbelina was! She drifted around on her little lake, singing in the most sweet voice ever. One night, when Thumbelina was fast asleep in her tiny walnut shell. A horrible-looking frog saw her from the window. Who is this tiny thing? She is so pretty. I think she will make a fine bride for my dear Toady and a very good daughter-in-law for me. The frog hopped inside and carried away the sleeping Thumbelina to the pond. Well up, well up. Bar up, bar up. Oh, where are you? I am so hungry. Stop complaining all the time. Look what I have brought for you. This beautiful creature will be the perfect bride for you. Croak, 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 croak. Yes, yes. I know you are very excited. Now we have to make a nice bridal room in the marsh so that you can marry her and stay there with her. Croak, 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 croak. The croaking noise woke up Thumbelina. She looked around, feeling very scared on seeing the frog and toad. <coughs> She is awake. She is awake. My bride is awake. Bride of this ugly-looking creature. Never. His eyes look like they will pop out at any minute. How dare you! You will marry my son and be a good and obedient wife. I will make sure you can never escape from here. The frog put Thumbelina on the leaf of a water lily in the middle of the pond. Thumbelina <laughs> sobbed and cried out for help. <laughs> Someone, please help me! 
Some fish swimming nearby had seen and heard everything. Look at that poor deer sobbing her heart out. That horrible toad will make an awful husband. Friends, we must not allow the nasty frog and her ugly son to get away with their horrible plan. Come, let us nibble at the root of this lily and set it free. And so they nibbled and nibbled and nibbled, till the leaf of the lily was free and floated away. Thumbelina sailed past many beautiful places and saw many pretty sights. One day, a big cockchafer saw her and carried her away to a large tree. He was very proud of her and invited all his friends to come and have a look at her. She looks so weird. She's actually ugly. And she's not one of us. So how can you even think of marrying her? Are you out of your mind? When all his friends said the same thing, the cockchafer thought they might be right, so he put Thumbelina on the ground and flew away. Poor Thumbelina. She walked and walked in the wood, eating whatever she could find and drinking the dew on the flowers. Summer turned to autumn, and soon the bitter cold winter arrived. so cold. Unless I find somewhere to take shelter, I will surely freeze to death. Brrr. As Thumbelina was walking in a field, she suddenly came across a tiny door. Ah! I think this must be the house of a field mouse. I hope it is a kind mouse who will give me something to eat and let me stay for some time. Thumbelina knocked on the door. And very soon it was opened by a mouse. I'm very hungry. Could you please give me something to eat? What are you doing out in the cold? Come in and warm yourself near the fire. You can share my dinner. I have some hot soup and cheese and bread. Thank you so much. You are so kind. Soon Thumbelina had eaten a nice meal prepared by the mouse, and feeling tired, she just wanted to sleep for some time. Your house is so warm and cozy. May I sleep here tonight? I am really tired after walking for so long. Well, if you have nowhere to go, you can certainly rest here. In fact, if you can keep my house neat and clean, you can stay here for the whole winter. Can you do that? Of course. Thank you so much. So Thumbelina spent the winter with the mouse. One day the mouse said to Thumbelina, Please clean the house very well, as I have a dear friend visiting me tomorrow. A friend? Is it another mouse? No, no, it's my good friend the mole. Oh, he is so rich. He has such a large home. You know what? I have a great idea. If you could sing sweetly for my friend and tell him some nice stories, he might even marry you. Even though he is blind, he will look after you well and all your worries will be over. When the mole came to visit, he fell in love with Thumbelina's beautiful voice and asked to marry her. I'm so happy. I'm sure you both will make a wonderful couple. Let us start making preparations for a summer wedding. As the mole was leaving the hole leading to the mouse's house, he kicked a sparrow lying there. Don't kick the poor little thing. Can't you see it's her? Where did this piece of filth come from? These pesky things keep flying all over and don't bother to make a home for winter. The sparrow deserves to die. Thumbelina was shocked at the mole's behavior. She couldn't imagine how anyone could be so cruel. 
Oh, you poor birdie. I will nurse you back to health. Though the mouse got angry, Thumbelina cared very lovingly for the sparrow till it was strong enough to fly away. As her wedding day was coming closer and closer, I can't marry that mole. I would rather die. Not only is he stupid and ugly, he is a total savage. And I can't imagine living all my life in a hole. I want to be out in the sun, breathe the fresh air, and see all the lovely flowers and birds. I have to escape from the mouse and the mole. Suddenly, Thumbelina heard a sound and looked up to see the sparrow she had looked after. My dear, you are a gentle and kind soul. That horrible mole does not deserve you. Winter is soon going to come, and I am flying away to a warm land. Why don't you just hop onto my back and come with me? I will take you far away from the mole and the mouse. Thank you, thank you so much, dear friend. I have to escape from here. So Thumbelina jumped onto the sparrow's back, and away, away, away they flew to the beautiful land of flowers. Wee! This is so wonderful. The sparrow very gently put Thumbelina on the petal of a large yellow flower. Thumbelina was tired after her long journey and immediately fell asleep. The sparrow sat on a tree above, looking after her. A little later, she woke up to the sound of a very gentle voice. Who is this pretty maiden? I have never seen her here before. Thumbelina got scared on seeing the stranger. Oh, don't be afraid. I am the king of flowers. I have never seen anyone as beautiful as you. Will you be my queen? Suddenly, Thumbelina's friend, the sparrow, flew down. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, this is the king of flowers. He is a very, very kind man, and everyone here loves him. I know. So, my dear, what do you say? Will you be my wife? The king was so kind and handsome. How could Thumbelina refuse? And so she married the king and became the queen of flowers, living happily ever after. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. In a dense forest, there lived in a little cottage the family of Father Bear, Mother Bear, and Baby Bear. What a pretty cottage it was, with bright yellow curtains, a pretty red rug, and lovely flowers growing outside. Now the Bear family loved porridge, and Mama Bear made it every day. Mama Bear, is the porridge ready? Oh yes, I'm just bringing it to the table. Ah, that smells nice, but I think the porridge is very hot. I will certainly burn my tongue if I eat it now. What shall we do now? I know it's such a beautiful day. Let us go for a walk, and when we return, the porridge should have cooled down by then. Come on, baby bear, put on your mittens and bonnet. We're going for a walk. Oh, I love to go for walks. Maybe I will find some honey to lick. Wait for me, Papa and Mama. I'm just coming. Yes, darling, we are waiting. Make it quick. And so the bear family went out into the forest for a walk. Now on the edge of the forest there lived a young girl who had beautiful long golden hair and everyone called her Goldilocks. She loved to spend her time with the little animals in the forest, the birds and butterflies, and the tall green trees and colorful flowers all around. She got ready as usual to go out. Mother, I'm going for a walk in the forest. Oh, Goldilocks, see if you can find some berries there. 
I was thinking of making a nice berry pie for dinner tonight. But don't go too far, dear. I've heard there are some bears living in the forest. Ooh, berry pie. I just love it. I know a place where there are some sweet blue berries growing. It is not too far, so don't worry, Mother. I'll be back soon. So Goldilocks set off towards the forest. How she loved to go there. The flowers, the little rabbits, and all the colourful butterflies. They all made Goldilocks so happy. I think I will take some of these pretty pink flowers for Mother. I know she will love them. They will look so pretty on the table. La 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 la. I wonder where my friends are. The little bunnies that go hop hop hop. Naughty monkeys that suddenly from trees drop. Beautiful butterflies flitting from flower to flower. And then flying far, far, far. All my little friends. I can't see any of them today. So looking for the rabbits and the beautiful butterflies, Goldilocks kept going farther and farther into the forest. After walking for some time, Goldilocks thought she was lost. Where am I? I seem to have come very far, and I promised Mama that I would not. Oh, I am so tired. Suddenly, Goldilocks saw something a little ahead. What is this? A cottage in the middle of the forest? Whose can it be? Goldilocks went near and peeped through the window, but could see no one. I wonder if I could rest here for a few minutes. Hello? Hello? Anyone there? There doesn't seem to be anyone around. Oh, the door is open. Slowly, Goldilocks pushed open the door, looked around, and then went into the cottage. This is indeed a very lovely cottage. Ah, I smell something very nice, and I am suddenly feeling very hungry. There, on the table, Goldilocks saw three bowls that had porridge in them. This is a nice big bowl. I will have the porridge from this one. Oh, it is so hot. I think I have burned my tongue. <laughs> After a few minutes, Goldilocks tried the porridge in the second bowl. This is too cold. It is not tasting nice. Then she went to the last bowl, which was the smallest. I like this porridge. I hope no one will mind my having it. I am so hungry. That was so yummy. After finishing off all the porridge in the small bowl, Goldilocks started to feel drowsy. I think I will rest here for some time and then go home. Oh, this chair is too big. It is not at all comfortable. So saying, she went to the next chair, which was Mother Bear's chair, but found that chair too big also. I think the small chair should be fine. But as Goldilocks sat down on Baby Bear's chair, the chair broke and she fell down. Ouch! That hurt! And the chair is broken. Oh, I hope the owner will not be very angry. Goldilocks tried her best to put the chair back together again, but couldn't do so. I have been a bad girl today. I promised Mama that I will not go far and I did. Now I have eaten someone's porridge and broken their chair. 
Goldilocks was feeling very, very sorry for being a naughty child. She decided that she would wait for a while till the owner came back so that she could say sorry to him. I do hope the owners of this cottage will be kind and forgive me. I really did not mean to eat his porridge and break his chair. Goldilocks went to the window to see if anyone was around, but she could see no one. Oh, I will wait for a few minutes more only. Otherwise, it will become dark and I won't be able to find my way back home. Oh, Mama is going to be so angry with me. Goldilocks looked around for some place where she could wait and wandered into the next room where there were three beds. I am so tired and the beds look so inviting. I'll just rest here for a few minutes. She went to the largest bed and lay down. This bed is so hard. I don't think I will be comfortable here. Goldilocks got out of Father Bear's bed and went to Mother Bear's bed. This bed is too soft. I will just sink into it. Let me try the last bed. Goldilocks then went to Baby Bear's bed. Ah, this is so comfortable and nice. I will lie down for just a few minutes and then go back home. I will have to go and say sorry to Mama also for being so late. Though Goldilocks thought of resting for a few minutes only, she was so tired that she soon fell fast asleep. Soon after, the three bears came back from their walk. I'm hungry now after the long walk, and the porridge must have cooled by now. What's this? Someone has been having my porridge. Someone has been having my porridge too. Oh, someone has finished all my porridge. What will I eat now? Now, now, baby, don't worry. I will give you some more. But who could have come here? No one ever comes so deep into the forest. <laughs> Someone has been sitting on my chair. Mother Bear and Baby Bear hurry to look at their chairs. I think someone has been sitting on my chair too. Oh, Mama and Papa, look! Someone has broken my chair! <laughs> Who could it be? Let's look around and see if there's someone in our house. They all go to the next room. I see someone has been sleeping on my bed. And someone has been sleeping on my bed too. Oh, look, Mama, Papa, there's someone sleeping on my bed. I'm sure this is a bad who ate my porridge and broke my chair. Come on, Papa, punish, punish. The loud sounds of Baby Bear made Goldilocks wake up with a start, and she got the fright of her life. She jumped out of bed, ran to the open window, jumped out, and ran away as fast as her little legs could carry her. Oh, the poor thing. We really scared her. She ate my porridge. She broke my chair. She is horrible. Oh, come on, baby. You can always get more porridge and a new chair. But that poor little thing got so scared. I don't think we'll ever see her again. Goldilocks did not stop running till she reached her house. She had never imagined that the cottage where she decided to rest belonged to bears. Mother! Mother! What is the matter, my dear? You are so late and I was so worried. Why are you panting like this? Oh, Mama, I saw some bears in the forest and I was so scared that I just ran and ran. I dropped all the berries I had collected and even some pretty flowers I had picked for you. Oh, my child, promise me you will never go so far again. I promise, Mother. I will never do it again. Now go wash your hands and have your dinner, and then go right up to bed. You've had a nasty fright, but a good night's sleep will make you feel better. I will never ever disobey my mother again. I am lucky that I managed to escape just in time. Of course, Goldilocks didn't know that the bears were very friendly and would not have harmed her. But she did learn a very good lesson that day, didn't she?